Today in the podcast, I have a very interesting gentleman who heads a charity called the Music for Living Foundation. His name is Guillermo Pizzuto and he's from Mexico and they are doing amazing work. Um, to date, they have touched about 3,800 children's lives through the use of music. And I mean, Guillermo, you've done incredible work in pulling children from underprivileged backgrounds bring him into a musical environment with the help of other university professionals. And those children have just blossomed. They've come to the end of their time with you and your charity. And some of them have been able to get to university and really improve their lives and living conditions. Welcome to the podcast. Great to have you here. Thank you, sir. It's a pleasure for me. And now, it's a great opportunity for us. Yeah, well, I'm, we're delighted to have you on because I really see here on this podcast that there are so many wonderful charities doing amazing work through the use of music in whatever genre that is. It could be popular music, classical music, bands, choirs. And I mean, your charity is an illustration of how that you can take children from really underprivileged environments in Mexico, bring them into your fold, as it were, help them through their childhood, adolescent years. And then as they come out, then at the end of their process with you guys, they head into university, they've improved lives, their families are, are positively affected and you're utilizing university professionals to help their social skills and oh my goodness, it's great. So um, your charity was established in 2013. So who were the people behind the charity who saw this as their vision? Uh, the first uh, man that started this, he was part of the state government here in San Luis Potosí. And he's been a long time associated with music. And uh, he started that, and it was a joint uh, venture between government and private. Uh, okay. and, uh, private companies. Private companies and a lot of persons that, uh, and uh, it started working and it moved on. But then now in Mexico, it seems like nobody in the government wants to give one cent to anything that is human. Yes. Yeah. Like only things are important. Yeah. And uh, so we, we continued on and since they were taking all the funds that they were given by the government, they took them away, they, they decided they didn't have any money. And uh, so, we're still working to make it up for it. We had a lot more kids when they funded it, but now we're working through sponsorship to get funding from private citizens. Okay. And I and think that that's, that's what's going to make it work because, you know, governments change every so often. Yes. People don't. Yes, yeah, yeah, very true. And I mean, you told me there before the we started recording to sponsor a child is about $50 US dollars per month and that gives a child a huge opportunity to come out from their environment, develop new skills and become, I suppose, you know, better able to handle social situations and have greater social skills. Um, so can you just explain the process of when a child comes into your charity, what happens to that child as they go through your charity? What's the format, the process that they go through? The it, at first, they just uh, attend some classes with some of our professors, professors and psychologists and uh, social workers. And uh, they kind of start with a little bit of uh, work, not music directly, but just finding out if they like it or not. Most of them stay. I'd say more than 50% of the kids and the uh, young children that walk into the program, they stay. And I would say that about 80% finish because they can start from the age of six, but they, after the age of 18, they're no longer accepted in the, in the work. Uh, of the yeah. Orchestras. So you teach them all instruments. What I mean is like you have the opportunity for those children to choose whatever instrument of the orchestra they would like to do. Is that the way it works or? Right, because okay. that's why what we do at first, you know, they get to try things so that uh, they find out where they want to be. Okay. Some have the ability to do certain things and the other one. 
And that's why we have orchestras instead of just, it's not a, a music school or such. We don't teach music, although we do, but that's not the object, that's not the primary goal. So we try to find what they like. If they don't like it, they're not going to do it. Yeah. And uh, we have now some uh, young women that are now playing with the uh, Mexico City Orchestra. Oh my goodness, yeah. And, uh, and, uh, <coughs> and they, they, they love it. They, it's they, just I mean, what they, they want never, to do. They never expected in their life to do that. They'd like to be told, you know, I never heard uh, classical music before. And uh, so the first time they ever heard classical music was with us. And yeah. it changed their lives. And uh, I'm so proud of it. Yes. And I mean, I see on your website there that you have orchestras, you have choirs as well. You encourage them You're to right. get involved in choirs and you have also bands. Now, when you say bands, is that more contemporary style music that you would do in the it's, band uh, format? It, it, well, it's like a Mexican band. Oh, they okay. play more okay. popular music and uh, they, they're more towards the popular music. But right. The thing is, see, we don't, we're not trying to make musicians. So we're trying to make a word in a group yeah. because that's part of the teaching to become part of society. Yeah. You have to come in and you have to see that if we do the right thing, everybody does the right thing. The orchestra is going to be playing. Yes. It's not that if you have the best musician in the, in the trumpet, it's mm -hmm. going to be the best orchestra. It's, it's integrated. Can you kind of give a picture of where these children, we'll say you have a child of six years of age, for example, coming into your charity, what kind of environments do they come from? Can you... Well, they uh, are mostly living in suburbs or in, in, out in the country. Some are three or four hours away by car and the teachers have to go all the way there every day because there's no place for them to stay there. Okay. And uh, so that's one of our biggest expenses is the traveling cost yeah. for the, the music to just to go to these communities. Okay. There are communities that are totally abandoned. A lot of them don't even have running water. And uh, so we help on all those parts of the text and help people to, to get those things done and better. And, uh, and they're doing it. And that's, and the music is just uh, the what makes the cohesion in the society. Yes. Because the parents are so proud of the children because they never thought that the children would play music. And uh, we supply the instruments mm -hmm. to each child as he enters the orchestra. We give him a violin, whatever. And uh, it's there not to keep, but to use because then they need a bigger violin when they grow. And, uh, but they don't have to sign anything. Yeah. It's just a, an agreement of trust mm -hmm. because these people are never trusted. Yes. You know? yeah. So we try to make that uh, human relationship important and see that they're, that they're valuable, that are important, mm. and that we believe in. But you so said there... You said there before we recorded the started recording that um, some people think these children are have no, you know, intelligence. And that is so wrong that when they're just given an opportunity, how they blossom and they really do illustrate they're very smart. It's just that they don't have opportunities. That's right. I mean, when you're born, you have a brain like everybody else. Yeah. But uh, if you don't use it, you don't develop it. And when you have a mother that has six children, one one year after the other, and the mother has a, a speech problem because they don't speak the language properly because they have such a few words that they use. Some of them have a vocabulary of about 250 words. Yeah. So you can imagine how many words are they, the mother speaking to the children. So the children are not developing anything in their brain when they're kids because they don't have the environment around it. And people say, well, they're stupid. No, they're not stupid, not at all. 
I mean, you teach them, you, you work with them, and they learn real quick. And for musicians, we'll say, from North America to come down to Mexico, do you welcome musicians from other universities or other places to come into your charity and volunteer to help? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. We wouldn't have any problem with that. I mean, it's, like I said, funding to pay for Funding is, is your big thing. Yeah. For them. We have an orchestra here in San Luis Potosí. It's a state orchestra. In uh, some years ago, they brought a lot of uh, Russian musicians to the town. And they have been teaching other musicians, and now we have local musicians, and we have still have some a lot, a lot of the Russian uh, musicians. Yeah. And they are our professors. They are the ones that uh, work with the kids, and and they really, uh, I would say that. We don't pay them enough. That's the truth. They're doing but extremely they, they valuable work. Yeah. But they love it. They love yeah. it. They love it. They love it. They I mean, I often, work. I often say in this podcast that music gives such a great opportunity for a musician to be able to give back to society to make the world a better place. And I mean, one of your taglines here is changing the world one musician at a time. And I mean, that's so true. What you're doing is so true. Can you tell us some of the success stories you've seen? Well, I mean, like I said, there's uh, more than 40 uh, young men and women that are now at the university. They would never have had the opportunity to go to the university. And in Zacatecas, which is a city that's about two and a half hours from here, there is a school, a, a university music school. Conservatory. A conservatory, and uh, when uh, when these young people from the orchestras go to register to be musicians at the university, they require nothing else right now. They will accept them. They're just accepting. They just accept them. Wonderful, wonderful. Because, because they know, but they know it's, your... it's, a diff it's a different way of learning because you're not going to a school. You don't have grades. You don't. There's no pressure. You yeah. do it at your pace. So each one has to do it in its own pace because otherwise, you know, when you try to like have competition between one and the other in the classroom and so forth, that causes certain problems. So that yes, it does. There's no competition. It's a, a, and then so they some, can just learn in their own comfortably, if you will, with no judgment mm -hmm. or criticism. And some become very, very good. And some just, uh, and a lot of them now have the, the ones that have finished. They have made groups and they play at weddings and parties and so forth. Yeah. So then now, now they have a way of making their some improving their money. life. Yeah, improving right. their life. And uh, we have a couple of uh, students that uh, set up a, a recording studio. Studio. Yeah. And uh, and that's. And that's what they, that's the work, that's the job, that's not what they live on. Fantastic. So, and there's uh, one that I was very surprised. I met him the other day. And when I, when I heard him talk, you can't figure it out. I mean, he's not from that town where he's born. No, no way. Yeah. And uh, he, he did so well in high school that he got a scholarship to go to the university. And now he's going to the university. The best university in San Luis yeah. has given him a scholarship to go to the, his uh, work. It's so, amazing. Yeah, I, I think that uh, it's really worth it. I I'm mean, it's pleased. it's a, it's an illustration of when you position children in an environment where there isn't pressure, right. and they're allowed to explore what they're naturally leaning towards without that competitive element, how they can just be themselves and blossom. Yeah, because, you know, 
these these young children they they don't have the ability because they have never had a contact with the more humans you know, what was around them yeah, yeah. and there was not very many yeah and uh, and the schooling the generally general all schooling the public schools here for those children are very poor I mean you go to some of the schools in this uh, country areas um, you would think it was a school yeah. You, yeah I mean when you talk to the professors um, I mean, you think that they, they never went to school. Yeah, they're just doing so, what they can. Mm. So it's, uh, it's, it's, everything is very poor as far as schooling is concerned. Mm. So that doesn't help those kids. And I think that this project gives them an opportunity to show what they can do. And, yeah. and many have. And for somebody to volunteer with your charity, what kind of considerations would they have to think about before they'd head your direction in Mexico? Well, they would have to get a visa, mm -hmm. you know, a working visa, yeah. I guess. And, uh, and things like accommodation, that kind of thing, can you supply that accommodation or guide them in that way? Oh, yeah, so that, that wouldn't be any problem. I mean, the city is not the largest in Mexico, but it's quite yeah. good in that. In that regard, and it's safe yeah. as well. Well, as safe as everything now in Mexico, yeah. because uh, like all over the world, it seems like that safety is not. Uh, yes, it's very. Not, yeah, it's very true. Yeah, it's it's, it's kind of shaky everywhere. But, uh, but you know, yeah. I have thirteen grandchildren in. Uh, and two great grandchildren. Oh my goodness! And congratulations. They all live around here in the town yeah. and so forth. Yeah, so, so all is good. All is good. Well, I'll have all the links to your website and um, your contact details in the description below. Whether people are listening on YouTube or whether they're listening on audio. Um, before we complete this episode, is there anything that you'd like to say to people listening? Well, first of all, yes, I would like to invite people to work with other people. Yeah. It's something that uh, has been lost in a way, you know. People are minding their own business. They think that they can solve their problems, and I think it's not true. I, I think agree. we can all solve our problems. We can all be helpful to each other in many different ways. Many ways the world does not uh, really think it's possible. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so I can see in the work that they did at the university, they showed that the relationship between parents and children, it improved tremendously because the parents were so proud of the children because they were musicians. Yes. Yeah. Before, eh, they weren't worth it. Yeah. So it's giving people the worth is, I think it's very important. And I mean, I'm, I'm just looking, it. I'm just looking at my notes here. And I mean, you did a research study on the social, musical and psychological aspects, and you brought professionals in from the university uniting on this collaborative model. And I mean, I think what you were saying there, you know, about the connection of people working together, solving problems, you can definitely say that this whole idea of community is so vitally important for people to work together in the days that yeah. we live in now more than ever it, with the influence exactly of technology that. separating people to a point right because you think that if you have something knowledge or money or whatever you can live with it and then be a, the best person in the world and that's not true we're only better persons when we deal with other people it's very a, true very true. Well, listen, it's a pleasure to have you on the episode today. And all I'd say to the listeners here is that if you want to support a charity, it costs $50 just to support one child per month, just 50. And you're changing a life for the good, for the betterment of a family, of the child itself, and for the community it lives in. So that's all it costs. So if you can reach out and donate. Now, the link to the website will be in the description below. It's musicparalavida.org. I'll have it in the link or in the description below for people to click on. Mm -hmm. I presume that they can donate there on your website. Right. In, okay. uh, we have a, in the United States, they have a, 
ways where they could donate and then they would send us the money. I don't know how we could do it uh, through international work because we haven't done it okay. except with the United States, but uh, I will find out and I would let you know. Okay, okay. So maybe if, if um, people reach out to you even via email before they donate, that might be a good thing to do. So as that can be sorted out safely. That's right. We, we, we are uh, approved by the government to give uh, receipts that are legal. Yeah, well, I understand. Yeah. deductible. Yes, okay, I get it. Yeah, okay. Well, listen, Without a pleasure to have you. To have more information. Yeah, okay. Well, it's a pleasure to have you on the podcast today. And um, you can see videos of, of some of these children playing on YouTube. Facebook and you're also on TikTok as well for people to see your work in action to see the children playing these instruments in action and just one final question there before I complete with regards to instruments who supplies the instruments to keep all these children busy playing music well Do you have... Uh, we have been getting instruments from people people buy instruments because they're going to play something and, and kids never play so they give us the instrument yeah. but they we, we've been getting donations from Canada and from the United States. In the last uh, six months, we have received more than 200 instruments from different places in Canada and the United States. So there's a lot of instruments all over the world just yeah. sitting there in the closet. That's very true. Yeah, yeah and, ch and they're and, even uh, in charity shops and, you know, secondhand shops and all of that as well. Right, so yeah. we, we can take them. We can oh, take right. them very well. And for example, I don't know if it's a, commercial but EHL yes. offered to bring all 119 instruments from Canada free. Oh my goodness, fantastic. Fantastic. That's great. That's great. Well, um, so that means if you have an instrument, contact Guillermo and um, get it sent to him. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, listen, thanks very much for coming on the podcast. It was great to learn of your story and um, if there's any new concerts or online events or anything, let us know and we can share it out. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your time and your effort. And it's welcome for our children.